Today we're looking at the artist Jim Dine. He is an American pop artist from Cincinnati, Ohio. You may recognize his heart art that we've looked at in the past where we use contrast and color. He is known for making art of everyday objects like heart shapes, bathrobes, and tools like paintbrushes. In his paintbrush painting, he uses contrast and texture. We'll be using color as our contrast and the texture and the bristles. We're going to focus on adding emphasis with color, create form by adding shadow, and texture with the splatter of the paint. So to start with this, I did this one with the brushes facing opposite directions. <clears throat> And I wish I did six, so that way I had a brush for every color. This time, I'm going to do it more like Jim Dine. And if you notice in his paintings, all of the brushes are in at the same height, and then the bristles are underneath. So what I did was I put a line down the middle. I started with the metal part, drawing the metal part of a brush, and building off of it. So what that's going to look like... For my next one, we'll use this paintbrush to go off of. I'm going to look at the metal part first. So this one's kind of pressed. It comes up, angles in, and then I see kind of a curve line here and a couple more curve lines in there. From there, it's thick and then it gets a little bit thinner. So of it getting thick, and then it starts to get a little thinner, but we want to see the whole thing. For my bristles, this one, they kind of go in a U shape. So you can draw that letter U first, and then just have quick straight lines. And I like to do a lot of them, that way it looks like they're overlapped. These two, they're kind of a little going crazy. So I could just take my eraser and trim those up so they're the same height. It is all up to you. Now to get the shadow, I started my shadows on the right side. So I'm going to continue to do the shadow on the right side, gently pressing with my pencil. And then I use my finger to blend it. And we're going to put some shadow on the brushes themselves. Since this is metal, and we can see that metal is very shiny, I'm going to lightly put pencil there, because we're going to keep these in black and white, blend it with my finger, but then to make it look like it's shining, I use my eraser to erase some parts of it. It's up to you if you'd like to do that, um, and I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow on the brush handle itself. Same on these ones. I did not get a chance to do that yet. Blend. And then if this is the metal, erase a little bit. Same with these ones. Blend. Kind of lost my pencil lines from going back in. I can use my eraser. Now, you guys can choose if you want to outline these with a marker or not. I did on this one. It makes it look a little more cartoony. But for this, I think I'm going to keep them the black and white pencil. Let's get another brush. Maybe this skinny one. So it's kind of built the same as this metal one. It's pressed at the bottom. I can see a little curve there. It has a long metal part. And I see a couple of brownies. And then the rest of it is a little thicker and then it goes thinner. Again, adding shading on it. Blend with your finger. Your finger's going to get a little dirty after this. That's okay. Add a highlight. Add the bristles. Again, if you want to outline where the bristles would be, so that way you stay in that shape. Then you can always use your eraser after and trim it off. 
I have my shadow out here. We have another flat one, but this one's bigger. And I might just have room for five, and I'm okay with that and leaving some room, or I'm going to scooch a smaller one in there. This one's at a diagonal. I see it curves at the top. And then it has like these two curved sections. And then your brush comes up. Bristles again are more in a square. I have mine come down a little bit longer. And see how I keep going back and forth, back and forth? Because there are a lot of bristles in a brush. Blend in here. Add my highlights. Add some shading on the brush, and this part's metal as well, and then some shading on the table where they're sitting. Not pressing real hard, and then just blending. Okay. Actually, I am going to do one more skinny brush, more like a watercolor brush. So it's really skinny at first, and it gets a little bit bigger. You don't have to do the same ones, find your own. If you want to leave it at five, that's great. If you want to add a couple more, go for it. It's whatever you have room for. And then this brush, the bristles kind of come, if it wasn't used that much, kind of come more at a point. So shading. Blending with your finger, add your highlights, and then I'm going to erase the line that I put there at the beginning to line up my brushes. <clears throat> if you would like to have splatters of paint all around, it's just an organic shape. So maybe I put some here. An organic shape is one that we can't really name. So remember that I can't look at that and say it's a square. Um, I'm going to add a shadow on this because paint blobs are 3D. They usually pop up off of the paper. Maybe I have one back here. So Jim Dine did not add these. Like I said, it's up to you if you want to or not. Um, I'm going to just to add a little something extra. And again, he kept his in black and white. So he had this big contrast of the black and white behind his brushes up here and then the shading all in the bristles themselves. Now I'm going to have to decide what color I want to make all these little organic shapes of paint. All right, once you have that, you can use colored pencils or um, crayons to color this in. I'm using tempera cakes temp or tempera paint. Tempera paint is the paint that you squeeze out, and I'm just going to dilute it with water. That, make, that means to make it more runny so it's not as thick. Um, you can use watercolors for it, and if you don't have watercolors and you want to use them, check out my video on my YouTube that makes watercolors with um, markers. So first I have my glass of water. That way I can mix up some paint. And since I have six brushes, I'm going to go red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. So I have a lot of water on this brush. I'm going to get a little bit of red and put some red down here. Now that was pretty thick. But I wish I had painted or added more water to it. And I probably still can. And then I'm going to have this blob be red as well. 
making sure where I added that little highlight to them to leave that white. I kind of wish I would trace this with maybe a thinner Sharpie rather than this thick one. I can always go back at the end and do that. I'm going to skip orange right now because the tempered paint that I grabbed is just red, yellow, and blue. So I'm going to go to yellow next. I already have my mixed a little bit from my example earlier. That's why my yellow looks a little greeny. Oops, I didn't mean to put it up that high. I'm going to go to blue. And I hope that you know the reason that this works, or that these three colors work, is because they are our primary colors. I didn't even mean to make my primary colors all bigger brushes, but I kind of like the way that that looks. Something else I want to do, um, I did not show you, is we can add splatter to this as well. I will do that now before I mix up my paints for the other colors. So I get a lot of water on my brush, and even if you're using watercolors, this can work. Make sure you don't have anything nice around you in case it does splatter. But I have, I put water, then I put paint, and then I put water on it again. I'm going to keep the red close to my red brush, and I just tap it. That helps to control it better than just flinging it. So I stayed on this side. Wash my brush out. I'm gonna get yellow next. A lot of water. More water on the brush. And tap my yellow. I'm a little crazy with these ones. And then blue. Water. Paint. Some more water. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to have my secondary colors for my last three brushes. So for that first one, the first secondary one, I have red, I'm gonna have some yellow. You can mix it on, if you don't have a paint palette, just use a piece of paper. It's a little too orangey, so I'm gonna get more yellow, or too red. Get more water to spread that around. I'm going to make this little blob back here orange. If you want, you can splatter that since that is the color that you have. I go to green. So I have my yellow. I have a little bit of blue. Mix it up. I get my green. Put more water on there. I'm going to make that blob green. So we're adding emphasis by using color. We're mixing our colors. And last but not least, we have our violet. If it looks too blue, add more red. If it looks too red, add more blue. Mix it till you get a shade that you have or a shade that you like. So you should probably not do this on a good surface if you're doing the splatter part of it and ask whoever's at home if you can do that. Maybe put paper towels down first. Um, and then if I want, when this is dry, I can go back and outline those with a black pen or a black marker, whatever you like best. I'm probably going to use a thinner black pen because I think that the marker took too much away from it. But it is your project. When you're finished, please upload them to Artsonia. I can't wait to see them and have fun with this, guys.